Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Your Mortgage Process. I'm your host, Greg Wareham. I got a treat for you today. Number one, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to get the unique time of seeing me in a pair of shorts, which 53-year-old legs aren't what they used to be, so don't make fun of me or post any memes about me after the fact. But really what I want to go through today is I had... Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the differences between conventional and FHA lending. Now, we've spoken about that in the past. What makes this a little bit different is I'm taking excerpts out of the, the book that I had written at the beginning of this year. Now, that is a shameless plug for the fact that I wrote a book that hasn't been published yet, but it'll probably be published by the end of the year. The reality is for the past three or four months, I've been working on a very intense project, so I had to shelf uh, the book project for a little bit. But with all that being said, I'm going to read you some things out of it, and I'm not going to put you to sleep, I promise. There's numbers, there's value, there's, there's comparison between the different loan types. So I'm going to get right into it. So let me start by re reiterating that both of these mortgages, FHA and conventional, are good loans. Neither one of them are going to put you in any type of peril as a home buyer. As with any mortgage, a 30-year fixed interest rate is, in fact, a fixed interest rate, and the rate's not going to change. Now, that doesn't mean that your payment cannot fluctuate. Sometimes your property taxes can go up or the cost of homeowner's insurance can increase. These changes may happen, but my experience personally is that banks will work with you if there is some type of shortage in your escrow account for property taxes and homeowner's insurance. The big picture, mortgages are big business, and lenders want to work with you to provide you always with the best, best path of assistance. Mortgage professionals like myself have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that the home buyers understand their, option, their options so the best decision can be made by you as the consumer. Let's take a look at some examples comparing conventional with FHA. So, and now this is going to be a literal scenario that uh, I had put together. So Keyshawn is looking to purchase his first home and he's found the perfect property. Based on his budgetary calculations, he can afford a total monthly payment of $2,800 per month. His credit score is a 752 and he has $20,000 to work with, which includes down payment assistance of 15,000. All other factors pertaining to becoming pre-approved for a mortgage, check out for Keyshawn. Keyshawn is in great shape. He had heard or had read online that FHA interest rates can be better than conventional mortgage rates. So he's thinking FHA is the best way to go. But before he commits, we need to drill down on the numbers for Keyshawn. So FHA loan scenario. So for Keyshawn, the purchase price is $350,000. He's going to put down 3.5% which gives him what's called a base loan amount of $337,750, because 3.5% down on $350,000 $12,250. Now, there's also a cost for FHA mortgages that is called an upfront mortgage insurance premium that equals 1.75% of that base loan amount. In this situation, that cost is $5,910, which gives Keyshawn a final loan amount of $343,660. So it's $343,660. We're going to use an estimated interest rate of 7%, and that's not indicative of where the market is today. I'm just using it as an example. Keyshawn would have a monthly principal and interest payment of $2,287. So that's taken that final loan amount of $343,660, 7% interest rate over 30 years, $2,287 is monthly principal and interest. Now, in addition to that, FHA is going to require an additional form of mortgage insurance, which is their mortgage insurance premium, and it's part of the monthly cost. It's 0.55 of 1%, which equals $158 per month. His property taxes are $3,000 a year, which is $250 a month. Homeowner's insurance is $100 a month or $1,200 a year. When you add those numbers up, principal, interest, property taxes, homeowners, and the mortgage insurance premium, the total monthly payment for Keyshawn would be $2,795. Now, that's pretty good. The numbers fit into his budget. 
So we knew his budget was 2,800, and it's coming in just slightly under 2,800 at 2,795. But let's take a look at the conventional. So in the conventional example, the purchase price is still 350,000. We would still have them put down three and a half percent. You can do that as Keyshawn is a first time home buyer. Conventional mortgage is still $12,250 as a down payment. Gives him that base loan amount of $337,750. Now because it's a conventional mortgage, Keyshawn does not have to pay that upfront mortgage insurance premium, which is about $5,900. So we're not financing that into his loan. As a result, his final loan amount is $337,750, just like it was on the FHA base loan amount. Now, let me be clear. The final loan amount for FHA was $543,660, and the final loan amount for conventional was $337,500. That's a fundamental difference between the two programs. Conventional doesn't have that upfront mortgage insurance premium. However, what we found out is Keyshawn's interest rate is higher than it was on FHA. FHA was 7%, unconventional was 7.25%, so slightly higher. That gave him a monthly principal and interest payment of $2,302. Now, the other thing that I do want to point out is I'm going to use the same the mortgage insurance premium for FHA was $158 per month. I'm going to use that same factor for the conventional loan to just compare apples to apples. So I'm going to keep it at $158, or excuse me, $158. The reality is Keyshawn, depending on the mortgage insurance company that we went with, may actually have a lower cost of monthly mortgage insurance or private mortgage insurance when you compare FHA versus conventional. I hope that makes sense. But we're going to use the $158 a month. Property taxes remain at $250 a month. And homeowner's insurance stays at $100 a month. That gives them a total monthly payment of $2,810. So what's the difference, right? On the FHA mortgage, the payment was cheaper. So the payment was less expensive at $2,795. And it was $2,810 for conventional. $15 difference. Well... So what loan is better for Keyshawn? On the conventional loan, again, the payment's $15 more per month, all of which is interest and potentially tax deductible because his interest rate's higher. However, the new payment puts us slightly over budget, puts us over budget by $10 per month. The FHA loan gives you the lower payment and within budget, but it comes at a cost of $5,906 for that upfront mortgage insurance premium that we financed into his loan. The break-even point of that $5,900 in cost by saving $15 a month is, you ready? It's 393 months. So again, the rate was higher on conventional, payment was a little bit higher on conventional, but we didn't have to pay that upfront mortgage insurance premium of about $5,900 a month. For the difference in payment of $15 a month on the conventional loan, it would have taken almost, I mean, it takes over 30 years to recuperate that money, right? When you have a 30-year mortgage, it's 360 months, and it takes them 393 months to recuperate, recuperate it. It's just a little bit long of a break even. In addition, the monthly insurance premium for FHA is much more difficult to eliminate as compared to the monthly PMI on conventional. For a conventional loan, you can look to eliminate the PMI, private mortgage insurance, which is at $158 a month, once you have a 22% equity position in the property, either from a, redu a reduction in principal, appreci an appreciation in value, or a combination of both. Elimination of PMI for conventional would reduce the payment for Keyshawn by an additional $158 a month, where you would likely have to refinance the FHA mortgage into a conventional mortgage to eliminate their monthly mortgage insurance premium of $158 per month. So I hope that that was clear. But let's take a look at the same scenario if Keyshawn has a 660 credit score. Remember in the previous scenario, he was over a 750 credit score. I think it was 752. 
So same logic on the FHA loan, purchase price of 350, 3.5% down, pays the upfront mortgage insurance premium, final loan amounts uh, 343.660. The rate remains at 7% because on a conventional, or excuse me, on an FHA mortgage, it's less credit sensitive than it is on a conventional mortgage. The monthly principal and interest remains the same. In the bottom line is Keyshawn's payment remains the same, even with the 660 credit score. So that gave him a total monthly payment of $27.95. Now it's going to be a little bit different on a conventional mortgage because conventional mortgages are more credit score sensitive than FHA is as far as it pertains to interest rate and to monthly PMI. So. The final loan amount for Keyshawn Unconventional with 3.5% three, three down on the 350 loan amount is 337, 750. But wait, his interest rate's higher because his credit score is a 660. That gives him a monthly principal and interest payment of 2420 a month. And also the PMI increases. The PMI can increase significantly on a conventional loan if the credit grade isn't that strong. And I used as an example here, $300 a month in PMI, same property taxes of 250, same homeowner's insurance of 100, which gave Keyshawn a final payment of $3,070 on the conventional loan. All right, so this just got a little bit more interesting. Based on the lower credit score, the conventional rates go up where FHA rates remain stable as conventional rates are much more sensitive to credit grade and down payment combinations. So for Keyshawn, the low cre lower credit with the low down payment really negatively impacts his rate and his PMI. And the silent killer on this really is the cost of PMI because PMI is not credit sensitive for FHA where it is unconventional. So with all that being said, you really gotta take a bigger look at this scenario. Now, a payment of $3,070 3, a month for Keyshawn, that may just be completely out of his budget because he was originally planning on $2,800 a month. So in this scenario, it would really be up to Keyshawn to decide what was in his best interest, but that's how the facts lay out for it. Now, the difference in payment between those two Total is $275 a month for conventional and FHA. You break even for paying off that upfront mortgage insurance premium, which we showed in scenario one, is a little under 22 months because now he's paying the $5,900 divided by the savings of $275 a month, $275 a month. And for Keyshawn's situation, that could be his car payment. So this is really important to understand what you can and what you can't do with conventional as compared to FHA, and more importantly, what's in the best interest of the consumer. It's not our job in the mortgage industry to make the decision as to what the customer should do. What's important is that the facts get across to the buyer and to the borrower. Now, Keyshawn's scenario was Keyshawn's scenario. Now, let's take a look at another example. So, one more scenario. So, Michelle has been working to get her credit back on track. Her credit score is a 620. She's hoping to get her credit scores over 712 months, and she's doing the work to restore it. The good news is Michelle has $100,000 to work with and wants to put down 20%. Let's start by looking at the FHA option. So, Michelle's going to pay $400,000 for the property. 20% down is $80,000. Base loan amount is $320,000, but she still has to pay that upfront mortgage insurance premium, which comes to about $5,600. So her final loan amount is going to be higher. It's going to be $325,600. Now, the rate would be slightly higher than Keyshawn's just based on the lower credit grade. So I'm going to use seven and a quarter as an example. Monthly principal and interest is $2,183 a month. Monthly mortgage insurance premium, even though she's putting down 20%, she's still required to pay it. Now, she's putting down more than 3.5%, so she does get a break to it. And the factor is 0.5 of 1%, which gives her a payment of 134 a month. Monthly property taxes are 400. Monthly homeowner's insurance is 125. And her total monthly payment would be 2842 per month. 
Now let's take a look at the conventional option. Same purchase price, 400,000, down payment, 20%, it's 80,000. Final base and final loan amount is 320,000 because you're not paying that upfront mortgage insurance premium. But man, is the rate higher for Michelle. In this situation, Michelle's rate may be eight and a quarter percent, I used an example. That gives her a monthly principal and interest of 2404 a month, but she doesn't pay the mortgage insurance premium or for convent that you do in FHA or the private mortgage insurance for conventional because she's putting down 20%. Monthly property taxes, 400, monthly homeowners, 125, and her total monthly payment would be $2,929 per month. Now, which one gives you a better payment? So the difference between the FHA payment of 2842 and the conventional payment of 2929 per month is about 80 or it is $87 a month. Again, all of which is interest, all of them may have some special uh, tax deduction or tax deductibility for her. You want to check with her? She'd want to check with her accountant. I'm not an accountant, just giving you uh, experience in the marketplace. Now, for Michelle, it's clear the payment's better, but for FHA, she's still paying that $5,600 in upfront mortgage insurance. And as a result of doing conventional versus FHA, the payment would be $87 more per month. So she would recuperate that money in 64 months. That's taken $5,600 in that cost, divided by the $87 increase in the conventional payment, recovers it in 64 months, a little over five years. If Michelle's long-term plan is to refinance in 12 months because she's improving her credit, she would never recoup that $5,600 cost, obviously. Michelle, in this situation, would have to strongly consider biting the bullet on a higher interest rate for the shorter, shorter term. And this is a really good example of mortgage lending not just being about the interest rate. You need to evaluate the situation given your short-term and long-term goals in order to make the best overall decision for your specific situation. So I know there were a lot of numbers we were looking at. We went back and forth between conventional and FHA. If you need any further clarification or you want to look at your individual example, you have a customer that has an individual example, just reach out to me, greg at yourmortgageprocess.com. And I hope that you found this a little bit more educational as to understand that mortgages aren't always about the best interest rate. And in some situations, it's not even about the best payment. It's about what the short-term and long-term objective is of the person purchasing the property. So as always, I thank you for listening or watching the show, and we look forward to catching up with you next week. Bye, guys. Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of Your Mortgage Process, hosted by Greg Wareham, produced by Greg Wareham and Nick Pavise at The Social Rift, and executively produced by The Social Rift. Thank you again for tuning in, and we look forward to catching up with you next week.